This is the Chase Freedom Unlimited. It's a credit card that I've had not once, not twice, but three times in the last 10 years. However, in 2024, with a slew of phenomenal no annual fee credit cards on the marketplace, I thought it would make sense to take a closer look and give you my honest review to figure out if this is the right card for you in 2024. Hi, I'm John of John's Finance Tips. This is a channel I dedicate to talking all things money, and today's money topic is a deep dive honest review of the Chase Freedom Unlimited after 10 years. I'll be sure to touch on the sign-up bonus, the earnings, the benefits, and of course, my final verdict on the card. And as for why I'm qualified to give you my recommendation, well, over the past 10 years, I have opened countless credit cards. I've earned millions of points and miles, and I've taken those earnings and redeemed it for cash back and free vacation. Along the way though, I've also built a credit score of well over 800, which then allowed me to qualify for the lowest of low rates when I was buying my first rental properties. Now, all of this was possible though by being very strategic and cognizant as I play the credit card game, and my hope is to take some of what I've learned along the way and pass it off to you. Today specifically though, it's in the form of examining one of my very first beginner credit cards ever, the Chase Freedom Unlimited, and giving you guys my honest review. With that said, let's go ahead and dive into today's video. Sign-up bonus. The Chase Freedom Unlimited is a card that's been around it's seemingly forever in a lifetime. I mean, I first got it in 2012. And the sign-up bonus hasn't changed all that much. Though currently though, there's a non-public offer, which is pretty enticing. But first, let's talk about the publicly available offer. This card right now offers you 0% promotional APR for the first 15 months on purchases as well as balance transfers. In addition, this card will give you a $200 cashback bonus after you spend $500 in the first three months. On the surface, this is very standard entry-level beginner sign-up bonus. And believe it or not, this is the exact bonus that I got when I got this credit card for the first time ever back in 2012. And a quick pro tip, any credit card that's gonna offer you 0% on purchases, that's essentially like an interest-free loan. For example, in college, I didn't work during the school year, but I would work during the summertime. I would leverage 0% APR cards. Basically, I would charge it, I would make minimum payments, and in the summertime, I'd pay off the balance in full. Now, the other offer on this card is pretty interesting, and I actually wish it was available when I first got the card. And this is a non-public offer. What it essentially allows you to do is get an additional base match of the cash back in the first year. And we'll get into exactly what that means in the earnings section. Speaking of which, let's talk about the earnings. This card will earn 5% cash back if you book travel through the Chase Ultimate War Travel Portal, 3% cash back on all drugstore purchases, 3% cash back on all dining purchases, and 1.5 cash back everywhere. Just that alone is pretty solid. However, if you're able to find the non-public offer, you will get an additional cash back match of the base earnings, which is 1.5%. So in effect, instead of earning 5% cash back for booking travel through the Chase Ultimate Award Travel Portal, you'll get 6.5% cash back. Instead of 3% for all drugstore purchases, you'll get 4.5% for all drugstore purchases. Instead of 3% for all dining, you'll get an effect 4.5% cash back for all dining. And instead of 1.5% cash back everywhere, it is in effect 3% cash back for all of your non-category base spend, which for a beginner credit card is phenomenal. But the thing you're gonna wanna keep in mind with the cashback match is that it's for the first $20,000 of spend in the first year. After that, it just reverts back to regular earnings. Now, me personally, how I would take advantage of it, folks, if I were you, is make sure you are spending your card. You're the one putting your card down for dining. You're the one putting your card down wherever you are when you're amongst a group of friends and you Venmo charge everybody. Because that's kind of the secret. It's not that I want you to spend money to earn points. I will gladly leverage other people's spend to earn those points. If you're interested in the non-public offer, I do have an affiliate link in the description box down below, so feel free to check it out. So now let's talk about benefits. With the Chase Freedom Unlimited, the biggest benefit to call out is the fact that this card puts you into the Chase ecosystem. Amongst the big credit card issuers, Chase, American Express, Citi, Capital One, maybe Barclays, maybe, 
Chase and American Express are usually the one twos. They're the biggest players, they have incredible value points, and I personally would argue Chase slightly edges out American Express. And so if you can get your foot in the door by starting with the Chase Freedom Limited, then you can open up your world to really leveraging Chase points to the fullest potential. When you then later on have a Chase Sapphire Preferred or a Chase Sapphire Reserve, or potentially even a Chase Inc. Preferred credit card. And there's two ways you can get value from the Chase ecosystem. The first way is if you paired the Freedom Unlimited up with the Sapphire or Inc. preferred product, you can convert your cash back into transferable points in the entire credit card points and miles game. You heard me say it before and I'll say it again. The most value you will get is when you can take your points from a major bank like Chase, like American Express, like Citi, and move it to an airline or hotel partner. Because within those airline and hotel partners, there are gonna be sweet spots that really let you juice your points for maximum value. And what I especially love about the Chase ecosystem is those points, the Chase Ultima reward points, can be traveled to Hyatt. I'm a huge Hyatt fan. I used to be Team Marriott until I got into Hyatt's program. Hyatt is phenomenal when it comes to the value you can get from their points. An example you've probably heard me say time and time again is something like the Park Hyatt in the Maldives. Instead of paying 800 bucks a night, you could potentially get away with it for 25,000 points per night. Think about that, 25,000 points, shouldn't that actually just equal $250? Well, yes, if you're not smart with it, but if you're smart with 25,000 points, you move it to Hyatt, you can redeem for up to $800 of value. That's the crazy thing. Of course, when you have the Chase Phone Limit, you can't do it, you have to pair it up with a different card, but again, this at least helps you start thinking a little bit more strategically of how you wanna start building your credit profile and what strategy and path you wanna go down. The other way you can get value from being in the Chase ecosystem is by leveraging the bonus that you're gonna get from a Sapphire Reserve or a Sapphire Preferred or an Inc. Preferred. So if you had a Sapphire Reserve and you redeem your Chase Ultimate Reward points through the Sapphire Reserve's travel portal, you will get a 50% bonus. Now, if we think about that, let's say you ended up getting the Chase Freedom Unlimited. Let's say you got the non-public offer where you can in effect earn 3% cash back for your base earning on up to $20,000 of spend. Well, if you took that 3% cash back, you transfer it to a Sapphire Reserve, and then you redeem for travel, you would in effect be earning 4.5% cash back. That's insane again as we think about how do we layer on different strategies and the strategy holds true even if you got the public offer so you're just earning 1.5 percent cash back on all your base earning you transfer over to the sapphire reserve you redeem for travel get the 50 percent bonus you would in effect be earning 2.25 percent cash back the card also has a couple of partner benefits which are pretty rare at this level so currently if you get the card you will be able to earn five percent cash back on all lift purchases until the end of march 2025. How it works is you earn your base 1.5% cash back for the lift, and then they will give you an additional 3.5%. Now, my thinking is, well, if you got the non-public offer, could you get an additional 1.5% cash back on top of that? So in effect, you could be earning 6.5% cash back on all lift purchases for the first year? Potentially, you'll also get three months of a complimentary Dash Pass membership as long as you enroll before December of 2024. You'll also get three months of a complimentary Instacart Plus membership as long as you enroll before the end of July 2024. And once you enroll, you will get a $10 credit to Instacart every single quarter, which I guess if I think about where we are in the year, you'll just get one $10 credit. But regardless, that's 10 bucks. The card has a shopping protection in the form of purchase protection. So if you purchase an item with this card and within 120 days, the item gets damaged or stolen, you can file a claim for up to $500 and you can file it for a claim of up to total $50,000 onto the card. And from a travel perspective, this card has trip cancellation slash interruption coverage. So this is for prepaid non-refundable passenger fares and you are covered up to $1,500 per person and up to $6,000 per the entire trip. Now let's move on to the verdict section. So there are three cons I do wanna call out for the card. The very first con is this card is subject to Chase's 524 rule. If you're new to the card space, the Chase 524 rule is infamous. What it states is, if you have opened five credit cards in the last 24 months, Chase will not approve you for another card, period. You have to wait until you drop under five cards in the last 24 months to get another Chase credit card, which could be a pretty big detriment if you start getting into the card space and you start opening cards. And trust me, opening five cards in 24 months, not that difficult. So you wanna be cognizant of that. The second con is because of the value of Chase 
and the clientele that they want, I actually think they're a little bit harder to get approved for as a flat out the gate beginner versus a card like a Discover It or a Capital One Quicksilver. So you might be frustrated applying for this card, pulling your credit and not getting approved if you're a pure, pure, pure beginner. And the third con is this card has foreign transaction fees which honestly sucks because it's clearly a card that someone as a beginner can leverage for travel given its travel benefits, given its potential to match up with other cards and redeem for travel, but yet it's got a foreign transaction fee. That's a bit of a zonk here, especially again, there's no annual fee cards on the marketplace, such as the no annual fee build MasterCard or even the Discover It that have no foreign transaction fees. If you're okay with those three cons though, my verdict for the vast majority of people is this is a card I would honestly, after 10 years, probably get for a fourth time. This card is just an absolute workhorse to have in your back pocket. Its base earnings is 1.5% cash back. If you decide to leverage the non-public offer, you'll get an additional 1.5% cash back match for the first $20,000 of spend in the first year, which then in effect kind of makes it a 3% cash back card, which in the points of mile space is really groundbreaking. Most other cards, the max you're getting up to is 2%. Having 3% catch all, leveraging your friend's spend, that's an easy way to rack up an incredible amount of points. And as we're thinking through how exactly we want to start taking down cards, this is a great first step into that Chase ecosystem as we start building out our profiles. So folks, this has been a phenomenal video. If you have any comments or questions, drop them down below. If you'd like to support my channel, if you're interested in that non-public offer, link is in the description box below. Otherwise though, I will catch you all on the next one. Peace.